Today we're going to introduce the notion of uh, PDAs, uh, pushdown automatons, which are um, related to context tree grammars as uh, NFAs are related to regular expressions. So if you recall, um, an NFA has the following structure. You can either read an input or you can skip an input, right? You also have n the notion of non-determinism, but essentially on each edge you can do either of two operations. You can consume an input or you can skip an input and just move to another, another state without consuming an input. So let's call the first one reading and the second one skipping. Basically are the two operations that you can do um, per edge. A non-deterministic pushdown automaton introduces the notion of a, a stack. So now the the stack machine, the sorry, the automaton also has a stack inside, and the operations on the edge will now be able to manipulate this stack. So let's go over um, the whole slide. Um, each transition now is extended with two stack operations. One is what you do before the stack, and the next one is what you do after the stack, and we'll clarify what this means. You can think of it as a precondition or a postcondition, or you can um, also interpret it as reading from the stack and writing to the stack, although they both mutate the stack, both of these operations. So let's clarify what that means in a bit. But first, let's look at the, the format, the notation that we're going to use. So now our edges no longer have a, a single uh, character, but now they have three parts to it. Uh, you have an a place where we specify the input, a place where we specify the precondition, and a, a space where we specify the postcondition. Again, we are assume this is two states that are connected with this edge. So what are the possible operations that you, that you can do? You can either read, you can pop, or you can push, and you can skip at any point, right? So you're, each of these three are optional. Reading is as before, right? You can consume an input, and then you can either pop from the stack, or you can push to the stack. Uh, when you posh, pop from the stack, you have to specify exactly what element you expect. So you cannot just say, I want to pop um, the next element and I, I, I want to I don't care about which element there is you cannot say that uh, with this notation you might encode it in a different with a, a different notation but the instruction that we have right now we either have to specify what element are we popping so it's a bit more constrained and we can also push an element on the stack and we can say push and the element after that, okay? So as an example, let's say I want to read from the input, consume the A, then I want to not pop anything, so I just say I skip popping, and here I'm saying I push an A. So one thing to be uh, mindful is that in NFAs, a comma means two things, right? It means either you do this or you do that. But in an, a PDA, a comma is used in the notation to represent, to separate the read operation from the pre and post, right? So this comma does not mean two things, it just means it's part of each thing. So what happens if you want to do two operations on an edge? Um, you stack them one above the other vertically. So let's see an example. One language that we studied uh, when we studied non-regular languages was the A of N, B of N, where N is the number of, uh, is the positive number of zero. Um, so this, as we know, you are, it's not possible to be um, represented using an automaton, a DFA, nor an NFA. And it's also not possible to give an, a regular expression that recognizes it. So the only it is possible to do with a grammar, as we already looked at. So now we're going to see how we could do it using a PDA. 
So we have five rules here, and whenever you write a PDA, there's usually this con convention where you, because whenever you pop an element from the stack, actually, let me just explain the intuition and then I'll go back to the, the, the nitty gritty. So the basic idea is that I'm gonna be pushing uh, a Sentinel empty. Let's, we'll circle back to this point. So let's say we initialize the stack somehow. And then what we do is whenever we read an A, because we need to recognize A's followed by B's and the same number of A's and some number of B's. So one thing you can do uh, intuitively is if you have a stack and you want to be able to read as many A's as B's, what you can do is just whenever you read an A, you push an element on the you, you push an element on the stack. So let's say I'm going to push A's to the stack. It really doesn't matter what uh, I'm putting in the stack. I'm essentially just using the stack as a counter. So whenever I read an A, I put something in the stack. And, and then non-deterministically, I can choo choose to move to the state where I just um, read B's. And then what I have to do, and this is where the constraint is, uh, needs to be imposed, is I need to read as many A's as there are elements in the stack. So uh, basically what I'm going to do next, and this is what this self-loop is trying to say, and I'm going to explain a bit more in detail what it's going to do, but what this self-loop is trying to say is that I'm only going to read a B if I have an element in my stack, which means prior to this I have read at least one uh, more A there. So if you think of it as a counter, whenever you read A, you increment this counter. So when you get to B, you want to read B's only if you can decrement the counter, right? But then once you reach zero, you need to move to the, um, you are ready to move to the skip, to the final state. So essentially, now we are reading and writing basically from two places, right? We are consuming the input and we can only consume it. Um, like we did before, but we can also manipulate a stack and consume elements from it. Okay, so what we do here is first we initialize, let's go transition by transition. Um, and here I just listed in the list, it just means these four, uh, five transitions. So the first thing I do is I initialize my stack by pushing um, a Sentinel value that says the stack is empty. Okay, so that I can at any point pop, if I am able to pop uh, this, this element that is in the stack, that means I've reached the end. There's no way, there's no specific operation to check if a stack is empty. So therefore we have to encode it with initializing the, the stack with one more element and that element that we call the Sentinel. So once we push the Sentinel, now we're ready to begin. So we re begin in QA. What we do is whenever we read an A, we push an A to the stack, okay? And at any point I can move to B without consuming any input and without pushing or popping elements from the stack. Okay, so now I'm here, I'm in QB, and QB I, re I need to read N Bs. I know that there are N elements in my stack, so I only read B if I can pop an element A and I don't do anything to the stack. So I just consume elements from the stack and then eventually I have only my Sentinel on the stack and I can safely move to the final st state, which is QF. Here there's a typo, it says QI, but this should be QF. 